If you own a piece of land, what can you do with it? Well, you can build a building on it. You can rent it. You can use it for advertising purposes or sell it after a while. You can do whatever you want. It is your land after all. Well, that is what Decentraland is, but in the virtual world. Decentraland is an online game or virtual world that lets you do just that. Own a piece of land that is yours and only yours and do whatever you want with it. In this video, you will know exactly what Decentraland is and what is the MANA token. How Decentraland works under the hood. Some tokenomics of the MANA token. And finally, how you can buy some MANA tokens. We have included timestamps so you can skip to any part you want. So, grab a snack and let's dive into Decentraland. Decentraland is a decentralized online game or a metaverse. In Decentraland, you play and explore the virtual world with an avatar, which you can customize however you like, from body to face, hairstyle, and clothing. Decentralized here means that no one authority or company controlling it, meaning that no one party can modify the software, contents of your land, or even block you from accessing the game, which is from where comes the name Decentraland. There is some confusion here between Decentraland and the MANA token. Decentraland is the game or virtual world you play in. MANA, on the other hand, is the digital currency you use to pay for the digital real estate you own or for any goods or services you buy like clothes or any other avatar customizations. Decentraland was created in 2017 by Ari Malik and Esteban Ordano. Ari Malik is a serial entrepreneur who has created other companies and was at the project lead role at Decentraland. Esteban Ordano was Decentraland's former tech lead. He has a lot of experience in the crypto world, as he was a software engineer at BitPay, launched his own smart contracts development company, Smart Contract Solution, and worked as an advisor to the MAG network, now called Polygon. Both of them have stepped down from their roles in leading Decentraland with the Decentraland Foundation, leading the development of Decentraland right now. Decentraland Foundation is a nonprofit company based in California, with Agustin Mendez in the head of engineering role. The space in Decentraland's virtual world is called land, and it is split up into parcels. There are 90,601 parcels of land in Decentraland. These parcels are owned by the players, and you can buy one for yourself using MANA tokens. Each land is 256 square meters, and each land has specific coordinates in the metaverse. Two or more adjacent parcels of land are called estates. Take a look at Decentraland's world map. The dark gray areas are the parcels of land. The blue areas are districts, which are pieces of land with common themes like music, gaming, or tech. The light gray lines are the roads, which are not for sale, and the green areas are called plazas, and it is where players respawn, and they are also not for sale. Landowners can customize their land however they like. From 3D scenes, interactive applications, and games, they can earn money of their land using these customizations. Also, they can lease it and earn a rent from it, put advertisements on it, or sell it for a profit after a while when it raises in price. Decentraland's in-game currency is the MANA token. With MANA tokens, you can buy parcels of land, names, and wearables to your avatar, including clothing, shoes, and accessories. Each parcel of land has its price, which is determined mainly by its location. Land parcels close to the Genesis Plaza or main roads are the most expensive, as they are the easiest to monetize. Although these parcels of land are in the virtual world only, they can get really expensive. The highest purchase in the history of Decentraland was 116 parcels of land sold recently for an astonishing price of 2.4 million US dollars, equivalent to 600,000 MANA tokens. Now, you know what Decentraland is and what is MANA. We are now moving over to how does Decentraland work under the hood? First, you should know that land parcels in Decentraland 
are stored on the Ethereum blockchain in the form of non-fungible tokens, also called NFT. You can think of these NFT as digital art. Each piece has its own characteristics and value. For example, a $1 bill has the same value as any other $1 bill, which makes the $1 bill a fungible asset. A parcel of land, on the other hand, is non-fungible, as each parcel has its own coordinates on the map, specific characteristics, and unique contents with varying prices, which makes a parcel of land a non-fungible asset. When you buy one of these parcels of land, you are the only owner of the land, and your ownership of the land is stored on the Ethereum decentralized blockchain. You should also know that the MANA token is also built on the Ethereum blockchain, which means that it shares a lot of features with Ethereum, like the smart contracts, for example. But it also means that it suffers from the same drawbacks as Ethereum, such as the very high transaction fees, which are called gas fees, which sometimes can make purchasing a simple wearable in Decentraland double its price. The Decentraland system is composed of three layers. The first layer is called the consensus layer. This layer uses the Ethereum blockchain smart contracts feature to track and store land ownership data. The second layer is called the content distribution layer, which is the layer that contains land's content data. These data are hosted on many decentralized servers, eliminating the need for centralized servers and the authority and censorship that come with them, which means that Decentraland can be hosted by its players without the need for any authority. Each land NFT on the blockchain has the date of its ownership and a link to a file that contains the content of the land, which is chosen by the owner of the land. These data are transferred between servers using the well-known BitTorrent protocol. The third layer is the real-time layer, which is the layer that enables Decentraland players to see and interact with each other through messages and voice chat. These social interactions use peer-to-peer -peer communication protocols. However, they also need servers to coordinate the connections, and these servers are provided by landowners. The Decentraland team has recently launched a builder, which allows landowners to create scenes for their lands using drag-and-drop tools without the need for technical knowledge. Also, you should know that all purchases of land are done on Decentraland's marketplace, from which also you can buy other items like names and customizations. As we have said earlier, Decentraland is a decentralized metaverse with no centralized authority to control it or make its decisions. Instead, Decentraland is controlled by its users, the holders of the mana tokens and the owners of the land parcels. These users control Decentraland through what is called a Decentralized Autonomous Organization, DAO, which is a mechanism by which these users vote on the decisions and changes that happen to Decentraland. Holder of mana tokens and landowners get votes based on the number of token they hold. Mana holders get one vote for each mana token they have, and landowners get 2,000 votes for each land parcel they own. When a proposal is issued and voted on, it gets executed automatically through smart contracts. We need to mention here that Decentraland's DAO is built using Aragon platform software. Another point you should know before getting into the tokenomics is that Decentraland completed an integration with the Polygon network in April this year. This allows users to move their MANA tokens to the MATIC network, where they can execute transactions significantly faster with very low transaction fees. Now, let's talk about some tokenomics of the MANA token. MANA was an inflationary cryptocurrency at launch, with an 8% inflation rate that decreases with time. What that means is that the supply of MANA was supposed to increase each year, with an 8% increase in supply in the first year, 7.4% in the second year, and so on. After a community vote done in November 2018, the yearly increase in supply was removed and 1% burn rate was introduced on all land parcels sales in the marketplace. In a nutshell, burning a token means sending it to an unusable crypto wallet, removing it from the circulating supply. This burn rate was then raised to 2.5% on land parcels and expanded to include names and wearables. For example, if someone wants to sell a parcel of land on the marketplace for 5,000 mana, 
you will need to pay a 2.5% fee in mana, which will equal 125 mana. These tokens will be burned and removed from the supply. What that means is that mana is now a deflationary cryptocurrency, with its supply decreasing over time. The original total supply of mana was 2.8 billion tokens. 600 million mana tokens have been burned to date, leaving the current total supply at 2.19 billion mana tokens, and 83% only of this total supply are circulating in the market. During the 2017 ICO, Decentraland succeeded in raising 26 million US dollars, equivalent to 86,260 Ether at the time. 40% of the total mana supply was sold, with 20% going to early development team. 20% went to Decentraland Foundation, and the last 20% for the community reserve. So, how do you buy some mana tokens? If you are buying mana, to use it in Decentraland to buy parcels of land and customizations, then you can buy it directly on the official marketplace by exchanging Ethereum to MANA. And you can then store it on any crypto wallet that supports Ethereum tokens like MetaMask or Trust Wallet. If you are buying MANA for investing purposes only, waiting for its price to increase, then you can buy it on multiple exchanges with normal fiat currencies, like the US dollars or Euro. MANA token is currently available on Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, Qcoin. Uniswap, and Crypto.com. Keep in mind that this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only, and it is not by any means a financial or an investment advice.